she hit and I immediately felt my back break. One of the first guys down to the hospital whenever the accident happened and that rattled me pretty good. I've never worked at anything harder in my entire life. It's one of the most optimistic, inspiring, positive people I've ever been around in my life. Um, I have a job out here and it's to inspire and encourage people along the way and that's what I strive to do. Well, hi everybody, Scott Breen here. Tonight we update you on a story we first brought you three years ago here at MTN, one that just gets better and better and better. We take you back to 2019 near the tiny town of Malstone. been to the top of Pro Rodeo's highest cliff, a six-time qualifier at the national finals. On this calm June morning, J.R. Vizane is home in Montana on the family ranch in Melstone. He's doing his part to herd, brand, and tag these calves. That's life when he's not on the rodeo trail. Last September, with time running out on the regular season, JR, one of the world's top cowboys, was on the bubble of qualifying for the world's richest rodeo. Only the top 15 in each event get in. Vizane was 14th in bareback, and he sure didn't want anybody catching him. Rodeo standings are simple. Those who win the most money are at the top. So JR made one last push all the way to Texas to win more money and make sure he earned that invite to the national finals. You only go to them rodeos if you have to, mm -hmm. type of a deal, because they're so far away from home, and mm -hmm. it's hot and muggy. And you mm -hmm. remember? Everything. You remember the ride? Oh, yeah. All yeah. of them. Yeah, I never went unconscious until they put me under for surgery. Yeah. He'd ridden bareback over a thousand times, but this time he'd drawn a horse that had only one showing on the PRCA. Slid up there, everything was right. She circled around there, and she bunked back into the chute, she went to flip. And I've had him flip over on me like that before a hundred times, and pretty catty I can get out of the way. And when she went to flip, I kind of set up to decide which way to go whenever she came. Well, she didn't come all straight over. She kind of loaded on her hocks and then jumped in the air, and it run my hips off my ring. I didn't have any weight. I, I knew I was just like a duck sitting out of water. She hit and I immediately felt my back break. And when she rolled over, she rolled <clears throat> away from my hand so my hand could come out. And I, I just remember trying to yank my hand out. And as soon as my hand got out, then she got up and gut stomped me right in the guts. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't catch my air. And I immediately I was, I went to sit up and I couldn't move my legs. And I couldn't even get all the way up. Like, I just barely posted up on my elbows. and. I didn't know how bad it was, but I knew it wasn't good. It was the worst pain I'd ever been in in my life. A broken back and paralyzed from about the waist down, JR says the break is right behind his belly button, T9 and T10 vertebrae. I caught basically on my shoulder blades and she rammed the rigging right to my chest. Folded me right in half. Pretty western. Pretty western, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Somebody looking out for you. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. He was rushed to a critical care hospital in Houston where doctors told Shelby they worried more about fatal internal bleeding than his broken back. Shelby, it's really bad. He said the horse um, like flipped over, broke his back. He said, we're just going to life flight him and get him to the hospital and we'll just keep in touch with you. And that was kind of, and then they hand the phone back to JR and JR said, he said, I love you and I need you to get down here as soon as possible. I just kept, I just kept praying, and and then like right after that, like I just felt a peace over me, and I, and I, and like I swear, God was just telling me like, no matter what, Shelby, it's gonna be okay. 
they braced for a punishing highway of physical therapy. For two reasons, JR said he chose Salt Lake City, closer to home, and buddies with similar injuries had left with reassuring results. They say you got to stand to walk, and we force myself to stand so I can get walking pretty soon, but there ain't no better feeling than standing up. This is where the cowboy grinded away for five months. Toward the end of March, Shelby still by his side, the two felt it was time to make their way home. We call this the Melstone Muscle Maker. We got all this equipment set up, this bench to do a bunch of core stuff on here. Push up, I do a bunch of like from my knees, I'll do like squats. Once we got here, we didn't take as long to rig up our own walking machine. Locking my legs. And I videoed it to Jan and she said, wow, that's impressive. She said, you just keep doing that and keep sending videos back and forth. It's a good pain, you know it isn't unbearable by any means, so. Taught Sage in Nevada how to do it. And right hand placement and stuff. Jared, Jared's always been a hard worker uh, since I met him. When we started therapy, I knew that like he wasn't gonna feel sorry for him, himself or take it easy. He was gonna work as hard as he, he could, and and he and he has since day one. And the doctor said that he he would have very little to no movement and and a very slight ch chance to walk again. And um, he's already had movement and, and things, so we know God's working. And literally to watch Jerry every day is inspiring because it really put life in a whole new perspective for me. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Jerry has it way worse than we do and he still gets up every day and does the same thing that we do, just a little bit different. What's it gonna feel like when you walk? Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be awesome, huh? I can't wait. Reacclimating to a new life in Melstone, the Vizane's latest milestone was about to arrive, and it had nothing to do with walking. Merely a month before JR broke his back, he and Shelby found out they were expecting their first baby. He definitely puts a smile on our face. Like when days are hard or therapy doesn't go as planned or something happens that's hard, we always just look at him and we just know that he's such a blessing and that God knew what he was doing when he gave us Riot. It was a feeling that you can't even describe with words. It just, I, my heart was full, you know. Oh, you smiling? Are you kidding me? Tell us a story. Tell us a story. Situation isn't ideal, and it ain't what what we had pictured. Definitely ain't what I pictured. My first kid, you know what I mean? You, you expect to be able to stand up, hold them, and throw the ball, and teach them how to saddle their horse, and. All that stuff, that's still my goal is to be able to do all that stuff, but you, ne you never picture holding one in a wheelchair, that's for sure, you know? Keep setting up stuff to make doing this a little easier on us, and hopefully along the way can keep encouraging and inspiring somebody else along the way. I, that's right away I set out to do was not let it get me down too bad. You can't control the circumstances you're dealt, all you can control is your attitude and how you react. So right away, I I've, I've, set goals to be walking in three months, and when that didn't happen, six months, and now I'm approaching nine months still with goals of walking, and I will. I believe that the good Lord upstairs has a plan, and that his plan is good, and um, I'm just gonna keep picking away and see where it goes. I don't know about simple, but makes it doable anyways.
growing up as a horse trainer, it'd be nice to have somebody saddle your horse and warm it up all the time. All you had to do was step on and ride off. So not exactly how I pictured doing it, but by golly, one dream's coming true. You know that saying, it takes a village? There's a good chance it's never been more true. This guy is barely a year removed from thriving in front of sellout crowds at the Super Bowl of his sport. When troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I guess the message that I want to send to people is whenever you have a struggle or a trial that is out of your control, to put it in God's hand and find the little things to be thankful for. He was Rookie of the Year on Rodeo's Biggest Stage. Now, JR's drive and optimism are his sharpest tools. And that village? Well, Shelby totes the patience and encouragement family literally shoulders the physical strength, doctors offer the knowledge, his hometown of Cali, Wyoming, nearby communities like Roundup, friends he's made along the cowboy trail and folks he's never even met are delivering time, tools, exercise equipment, and donations to help with medical bills. And the family's freshest buckaroo? Good luck even imagining the inspiration he carries. When I'm laying in bed at night and I think about the things that have been taken away, which then reflects to the things that I've been given, this baby itself is a gift and a blessing. The life I have is a gift and a blessing. The things that I've been given, the recovery I've made thus far, far outweigh the things that have been taken away. And the character that it's producing inside of me is far greater and, and I'll be far better off further down the line than, than I was before, and, and I, I believe that. Now when we come back, fast forward three years as JR's improbable recovery story hits yet another gear. Well, welcome back to the remarkable recovery story of JR Vazane. We caught up with him and his family at the recent National Finals Rodeo. Only two and a half years old, Riot Boyd Vizane walks around the National Finals Rodeo like he owns it. Mom and Dad are teaching him to greet people with a simple howdy partner. Say howdy partner. Say howdy partner. On this particular Friday night in Las Vegas, Riot proudly sports a championship rodeo buckle almost bigger than he is. It belongs to his dad, J.R. Vizane. And here at round nine of the NFR, Riot and his mom Shelby ride up this escalator and head to their seats inside the mighty Thomas and Mack Center. It's an arena where just a few years ago, JR showcased his talents to sell out crowds as one of the world's best bareback riders. Whoa. Oh. Thing is, Riot has never seen his dad ride competitively, at least not in person. That's because just a few months before he was born, the unthinkable happened to JR at this rodeo in Texas. I knew I was just like a duck sitting out of water. She hit and I immediately felt my back break when she rolled over. She rolled away from my hand so my hand could come out. As soon as my hand got out, then she got up and gut stomped me right in the guts. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't catch my air, and I immediately I went to sit up and I couldn't move my legs. I just barely posted up on my elbows and I didn't know how bad it was, but I knew it wasn't good. JR had broken vertebrae in his back and couldn't move from the waist down. But when clarity struck, he vowed, swore up and down, that he would walk again. The doctor said that he, he would have very little to no movement and, and a very slight ch chance to walk again. There would be surgeries, endless months of rehab and physical therapy in Texas and Utah, an overwhelming outpouring of support from family, friends, fellow cowboys, and folks he'd never even met. Back on the family's Melstone Ranch, they'd convert this garage into his gym. We call this the Melstone Muscle Maker. This bench, do a bunch of core stuff on here. From my knees, I'll do like squats with this and a ball. And Shelby's brother, Sage Newman, was right there, literally, to help JR every step of the way, even guiding his feet on this treadmill. Slow and steady wins the race, right? 
but the steps were far from cruise control. Frustrations, dead ends, and disappointments took turns trying to break his spirit. What's it going to feel like when you walk again? Oh, it be awesome, huh? Amid the baby steps, Shelby gave birth to Riot. <gasps> Tell us a story. Situation isn't ideal, and it ain't what, what we had pictured. Definitely ain't what I pictured. My first kid, you know what I mean? You, you expect to be able to stand up, hold him, and throw the ball and teach him how to saddle their horse and all that stuff. That's still my goal is to be able to do all that stuff. But you, ne you never picture holding one in a wheelchair, that's for sure, you know? Wheelchair dad is all this cowboy had ever known until recently. I've never worked at anything harder in my entire life. It wasn't until after a series of new tests last spring, JR was approved for just a trial and the very slightest outside chance he might be a candidate for these robotic leg braces. Sensation, some tingling and burning and stuff like that, so. Truth is, there weren't many candidates in the entire country. I think they picked four people. It's a little slow, a little robotic, but... If Jared would have sat in that chair and not stood and worked out for the last three years, he wouldn't have been able to do this trial and get that walking machine. You see, doctors in Texas needed to be sure JR's bones and muscles were healthy enough to even justify these exoskeleton braces. And they were. And after the first day of being in that machine, I said, I need to get one for at home. I said, let's do it. And then he told me the price. I'm like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do that? So Rodeo family rallied together once again. Uh, L'Oreal Harbor with the Bronco Ride Nation uh, put on a fundraiser. Mitch Pollock uh, said, come have an, uh, ha have an auction at my Bronc match. Western Sports Foundation paid for half the machine. Got a fast mode, a slow mode, kind of do some warming up first. After enduring more than three years of pain and uncertainty, it took less than two days for Shelby to notice the difference. You could just see it on his face, like just to get up and be able to walk. I didn't realize the change in the mental morale that it would have on me. I asked him, I said, like, what's the most exciting part of it, you know, because I'm thinking there's something that's just crazy. And he said to literally look somebody in the eye when I'm talking to them. And I'm like, oh my, the little things in life, right? But the little things took a long time to align. After weeks of testing in Texas, summer passed before the robotics finally arrived. I got it in Billings on the 14th of October. The company's out of Ohio. They flew in a specialist, trained me and the therapist for a couple days, and then I did another, oh, three weeks to a month of training on it and had to pass a test. Which he did. And at that point, the little man became not only more curious, but more excited than ever. I think the most emotional I've been since the accident was the first time Riot seen JR walk in his walking machine. And Riot said, Dad, you tall. And then, and then, he, and then he was just bossing him around. He's like, Dad, come on. Come on, Dad, let's walk, he says. He wanted me to carry his jacket. Enough of me taking care of you, you're taking care of me, he said. You probably should have put a t-shirt on to be on the news. Throughout all this, Shelby's brother, Sage Newman, the unselfish helper, exploded for his best ever year in saddle bronc riding. The top rookie this year is Sage Newman from Melstone, Montana. And he qualified for his first NFR. Naturally, that demanded a family road trip to Vegas, where they'd watch all 10 nights. 87 points tonight for second place aboard Double D. He deserves to be here, and he's worked at it hard a long time, so winners hang with winners, man. Sage placed in a couple rounds, won over $30,000, and finished 11th in the world. And while he was carving his own name into NFR lore, we visited JR gaining ground on his legwork in the backyard of this Airbnb just a couple blocks off the Vegas Strip. For three years, Sage had given everything to JR's recovery, and that didn't stop, even despite being pulled a variety of directions at this first NFR experience. Sage has been right there every single step of the way. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> even here, like you would think the kid would be like hanging out with buddies and stuff, and Sage is still making sure JR's wheelchair gets loaded. Like that's the kind of person he is. It's, uh, it makes my heart swell up. His heart wasn't the only one swelling. The big reveal almost nobody saw coming on opening night. JR would crank up his robotic legs, make his way through this downstairs tunnel, and stunningly, 
walk around the corner to surprise his bareback brothers. There wasn't one guy in there that didn't maybe stand on their feet and clap and go high five him, shake his hand, hug him, you know. First night he walked in on his on his new robotics and standing up and it's amazing. You know, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. This is home, man. This is my family. It was JR's first return to the Super Bowl of Rodeo since shortly after his wreck in 2018. Uh, I was one of the first guys down to the hospital whenever the accident happened and um, that rattled me pretty good, you know. Him and I both qualified for our first NFR together in 2012, you know, and to clear up until his accident, we'd, we'd done it every year. Caleb Bennett, with whom he'd logged thousands upon thousands of rodeo road miles, was one of the few in on it. We had talked and a little bit before he got down here, and he's like, what do you think about me trying to get down in there? I'd like to walk down there on these robotic legs and show these guys what's up. JR would hang out all ten nights, but the final nine on wheels. On this night, just a half hour before grand entry, he rolls in as bareback riders kick around a hacky sack. Can I join him? First time I saw him on his on his robotics, I said, you got spur mode set on that thing yet or what? <laughs> Seeing him down in there really humbles you and, and reminds you what life and, and everything is all about for real. Every night you get a fist bump from him and you head out and he wants to see a good spur ride, so we're going to go give him one. That's one of the most optimistic, inspiring, positive people I've ever been around in my life. You'll be hard pressed to find any other answer from any other person to meet JR. And of all the ways he appreciates and describes these life altering leg braces, permanent isn't one of them. It's bittersweet. I pictured my first steps being different, but they're steps nonetheless. It takes obedience. I have my rough days too, but um, I have a job out here and it's to inspire and encourage people along the way, and that's what I strive to do. And the one closest to JR and encouraging him. Shelby. She is my rock. On all my bad days, she's there to pick me up. And all the days I want to be lazy, she's prodding me along, reminding me what my dreams and goals are. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for her. As for Riot, word is he'll climb on and ride just about anything. Such a good little helper, and he is heck on his mother, man. He's wild and he's fun and uh, going a million miles an hour. Riding in this arena is one thing, but being a dad makes your heart swell up, makes you want to poke your chest out, and I'm sure proud to be that little boy's dad. Say howdy, partner. Say howdy, partner. Howdy, partner. And don't blink, it may not be long before we see that little boy riding down at the NFR with his own championship buckle. Howdy, partner. And one other note, JR insists that one day he will walk again without those leg braces. I'm Scott Breen. Thank you for watching.